How y'all doing? This is a video about the reasons why I want to be an owner operator. And um, I basically was thinking about being an owner operator way before I even went to trucking school. Because, I don't know, I just. I don't know. I, I just always, I was always more focused on the business side of trucking since day one, and uh, uh, I, I just saw the, the numbers, and I, I talked to a lot of uh, successful owner operators that really um, helped me out like tremendously. Like um, they basically answered all my questions, and and I actually got them on speed dial too. So if I have any questions, they left me their number. I can call them anytime. And they have no problem helping me, so I'm cool with that. But um, basically, I just want to control. Like I don't want nobody telling me that I gotta go to this, go to the shipper. And I know it fucking sucks. I know it. I know they take forever to load you, and I know it's like in a shitty ass area and all that. And it's just you know what I'm saying. I, I just know it's gonna be some crap. You know what I'm saying? Some bull crap. So, you know what I'm saying? I just want more freedom. Like, like I want to go where I want to go. Because it's it, it's the worst when you be like, um, I'm not going up in the mountains. And you have no option. You have no choice. Because you driving a truck. And you basically go where they tell you to go. So, I, I, didn't, I, I mean, I didn't like that. You know? And then I also want, I also want to have access to the low board. So I can actually pick my own loads. I wanted that also. So I basically already knew owner op is probably gonna be the spot for me. That's that's gonna be my area. And then I also I wanted to uh, control my income, like negotiate rates. Like I had that option here at Mercer. You know, what I'm saying I can literally I can call I can call my agent, and my agent can uh, negotiate for me. Or I can call them directly. I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Because, I mean, it was one time, it was a little paying a dollar and 35 cents a mile. And then I negotiated up to a dollar and 55 cents a mile. You know, I mean, it sounds, I mean, that's a big difference in pay. <laughs> a couple hundred dollars difference. And I'm cool with that. So, I don't care. <laughs> you know, um... So, I mean, it's, it's a couple things that I was looking for. Like, I was looking for non-force dispatch. So, basically, I can stay home for a whole week if I wanted to. I can stay home two weeks if I wanted to. And I don't want nobody blowing up, blowing up my phone. Like, I love it here. Like, I, I took I took four days off uh, last week, and that was amazing. Like, like nobody called me. I just took off. And then, like, I, I basically, I looked at the little board, found me a load. Like, I took four days off got a little spoiled because I basically took um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. And it was fucking amazing. <laughs> and then uh, I woke up woke up on, on Monday and I was looking at the load board. And I found me a load, picked up on Monday, dropped it off on, I think, Wednesday because it was like a, it was, it was a pretty far load. It was pretty far. So, but that load was paying pretty good. <laughs> And then I realized that I like, like this is what I've been looking for over here, because um, it, it it feels really good when you can actually pick your own work schedule, like like you know what I'm saying you can actually control your own work schedule. It's fucking cool. And you pick, and you and then you basically pick the areas that you want to work in. Because you know you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying if you don't want to go up in the mountains you know what I'm saying you don't want to mess with the snow you just stay down south. That simple, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I went to Utah when it was it was snowing a little bit in Utah, but it wasn't that bad. You can and the roads was clear, so because um, they put that salt down, so I was good to go. I basically I basically didn't need my tire chains and all that crap. I ain't need to do none of that. That load was paying good though. It was going from I think it was going from Mississippi all the way to Utah. Yeah, it was going all the way to Utah. But it was paying. I think it was paying. Like two dollars, two dollars and ten cents a mile. That shit was pretty good, bro. It was a pretty good load. 
that was literally my only low for the whole week. You know, um, and then and then uh, it's it's different being on being an operator, man. Like you basically don't really have a set schedule no more. Like like those are not company drivers. You work Monday through Friday. When an operator, you you it's no it's no schedule like that no more. Like 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 I don't even work. I don't even work Monday through Friday no more. Like I like I I work like sometimes I stay out two weeks. Sometimes I come home on a Wednesday, or sometimes I come home on a Tuesday. Like I, I I came home on a Thursday one time. You know, like it's weird. Like I mean, it's cool though. Like I basically get to come home anytime I feel like it. I can come home anytime I feel like it. You know what I'm saying? I, I find me a load that's going probably going through the house, and I swing in the house. You know, do my ten hour break at the crib. And then I go back out first thing in the morning and drop the load off. You know what I'm saying? I've done that a few times. Uh, but then, uh, you know what I'm saying, if I feel like I'm mentally drained and I need to come back home, I find a load that's close, pretty close to the house, I go straight to the crib. Just like that, you know? And then um, I have a lot more freedom, too, when it comes to bobtailing because I'm not used to this. Because like, most companies that I work for, um, you couldn't bobtail. You can't, you can't go in personal conveyance and drive their truck and bobtail to a waffle house or something like that. You can't you couldn't do that. You had no option to personal conveyance. Now I have complete control of personal conveyance. Like I have that option now on my Qualcomm. I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, because you're just like um I'm basically not forced to eat truck stop food every day. You know, uh sometimes Sometimes I just go in personal advance mode and I be like, oh, I'm craving, you know, I'm craving like a little Chinese buffet right now. And I go on Google, find that Chinese buffet, boom, boom. <laughs> and I fucking bobtail straight to it. <laughs> I go in personal advance mode on my Qualcomm and I just go straight to it. Go straight to the place, bobtail straight to it. Like, I'm not used to that. You know what I'm saying? You go in personal advance, you put, you go into dinner, boom, boom, and get, you got two hours. To make to basically drive there and come back, you got you got up to two hours, and I think that's uh, plenty of time to go eat and then come back. Um, yeah, I mean I'm not used to I'm, I'm not used to that much freedom. Like and then um, I can I can customize my truck. I can do whatever I want to my truck. Uh, I, I basically got nobody telling me I can't do this. You can't do that. I have no restrictions. I can I can literally personalize my truck to the way I like it, and that's one thing I love. I love that man, and um, I just I just really love the fact that um, you know what I'm saying I'm running my business the way I want. You know I'm, I'm managing my taxes, um, I'm managing my maintenance fund, all of that. You know, and so far I basically got no problems with my truck. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I got like some minor stuff that I need to be, you know, I need to address later down the line, but it's not really that serious. It's just small stuff, you know. So, a few few cosmetic issues, you know. Um, I'm definitely gonna repaint my bumper, um, like, like repaint a chrome or whatever, or, uh, or or just buy a chrome bumper. I might do that later down the line, you know. Um, and I'm gonna do some polishing. I, I, I think I'll do some. Um, I'm gonna polish like my aluminum, like you know, what I'm saying my tanks and shit, like repolish them. They just look faded. <laughs> Get the things back shiny, you know. Yeah, I mean, look, the the best advice I can give you, man, when you become an owner operator, you know, what I'm saying, always take care of your truck. Take care of your truck first. The truck comes first before you start doing any. You know what I'm saying? If you want to add chrome to it and all that crap. I mean, you can do that. But just make sure you take care of all your maintenance for your truck. Make sure your truck is running running strong before you start, you know, start doing all this extra stuff to your truck. Spending $10,000 on fenders. Or if, well, $2,000 on fenders and all that chrome fenders and shit. You know what I'm saying? You can get that later down the line. You don't really need that right now. But take care of all your, your mechanical problems first. Before you start um, buying, you know, buying upgrades for your truck, and you'll be good to go. Um, always take care of your business bef- before yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to take care. Of, you got to take care of your truck first. First off, because your truck, if your truck ain't running, you ain't making no fucking money. That's what it comes down to. You know what I'm saying? If your truck 
is always having problems, is always in the shop, DOT is kicking your ass and pulling you over left and right, and getting all these points and all that. And I'm telling you, your company will fire you. The company that you're with will fire you if you got too many points in your record. They will let you go. And that truck note is coming out regardless. So so now you got fired from a company, you got a truck note still coming out. So what you gonna do? You know, so that truck note I mean, my truck note is only a thousand, a thousand ninety five a month, which is a blessing because I don't believe in big, he- hefty truck notes. You know what I'm saying? Paying two thousand, twenty five hundred a month because I ain't got to work as hard. I mean, I still grind out here now. Don't, don't get me, don't get it twisted. I still grind, but I don't, I don't have that much pressure on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not really worried about the truck note. Cause don't you have some guys, they just, they be like, on it's like constantly on their mind because they gotta pay a three a two thousand dollar or twenty five hundred you know dollar truck note you know what I'm saying that's a lot of pressure right there like man I like like I would panic like like I, I'd be so nervous out here with a three thousand dollar truck note like I'll psh, <laughs> hell no I basically told the dealer man I was like I want me a truck with a truck note under twelve I'm good to go under twelve. Give me a forty-two thousand dollar truck. I'm good. That's all I need. I don't need nothing crazy. I mean, starting out. I mean, later down the line, I'm gonna upgrade. You know what I'm saying? I might, I might give me a W nine KW or something like that. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a nice ass truck, bro. W nine uh, or get me a um, might give me a Western Star. Some Western Stars are sexy too. Them uh, international Lone Stars. Oh my god, they so fucking sexy too. Yeah. So I mean, that's later down the line. You know, I'm not really worried about that, you know. <laughs> right now, I'm just, I mean, I got me a starter truck. I'm cool with it. I ain't got no problems with it. Straight. Gets the job done. But, um, I basically been on, I, say, say, I, I been on that I was ready to be an owner operator, man. I was ready to make that move. I was ready to make that jump. You know what I'm saying? I just jumped out there to the wolves, man. I was like, it is what it is. Fuck it. I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if you know, what I'm saying if you keep waiting and holding off and shit, you never gonna do it. Like you just gonna keep procrastinating, and you never gonna make that leap. You know, what I'm saying to to better your situation, but but you gotta you gotta make a sacrifice in life. That's how life works, man. And uh, you gotta spend money to make money. That is true. You do. Cause I spent a lot of money to get this started. I spent all like I gave it my all. <laughs> I, I get literally went on savings, rainy day fund, checking, all that. Use all that money. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's crazy, bro. Yeah, but it's all good. Paid off, man. I'm just sitting here in um, San Antonio, Texas, at the pilot right now. And, uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get unloaded first thing in the morning. But um, let's see, what's it? Yeah, I'm tired, boy. I just want to make a video if I want to sleep. Probably gonna make another video soon. But uh, I'm gonna talk to y'all later, okay? I just wanna give y'all a little update. Y'all look tired as hell, man. Yeah, I'm lost. I need to go to sleep, man. Ah, oh, I need to get a better camera eventually too. <laughs> but uh, but I'm checking out this trucker Taylor here. It's checking out. Just getting all this status update. I'll make some more videos coming up soon, okay? on my venture. Okay, but y'all take it easy and God bless. Peace.